Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the fifth root of x minus 1 plus the square root of x plus 2 equals 3. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, I'm going to be trying a couple different ways. So let's start with the first method. I kind of want to isolate one of the radicals because that's what we usually do with radicals. So let's go ahead and isolate the square root. And then, of course, this is going to be followed by squaring both sides, right? Because we want to get rid of the radical. So if you square both sides, on the left, we're going to get x plus 2. On the right-hand side, we have a minus b quantity squared. That's going to look like 9 plus the fifth root of x minus 1 squared minus 2ab, which is 6 times the fifth root of x minus 1. So this stuff is too complicated because of the fifth roots. We do need to get rid of them, but you can only isolate one at a time and then take the fifth root. That's going to bring in more radicals, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and try something slightly different. Why don't we isolate the fifth root? And from here, we get 3 minus the square root of x plus 2. And of course, the next step should be fifth root, or I mean fifth power on both sides, right? Because we want to get rid of the fifth root first. And when we do that, we're going to get a lot of terms. The left-hand side is going to be fairly simple, x minus 1. The right-hand side is going to be like a minus b to the fifth power, six terms, the binomial theorem, so on and so forth. And you're going to get a lot of terms from here, but let me give you the final product. And even before that, because we're going to have to square this one more time. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to get something like this. We're going to get a quadratic. This is, of course, after doing all the factoring and everything. I'm just skipping some of the steps. And then this will be multiplied by a radical, which is the square root of x plus 2, which comes from here, by the way, because you're going to get a lot of terms, radicals with co quadratic, so on and so forth. And then you're going to have terms like, you know, 15x squared, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to do more work. So it's going to turn into something like this. Again, I'm skipping quite a few steps here because this is really long. I don't think you want me to do this. All right. And this will equal something quadratic. Eventually, I ended up isolating the, what's it called, the radical this way. But of course, I had to square both sides, right, to get rid of all the radicals now. And this really becomes messy because you get a quartic from here. Here you will get a quartic multiplied by x, which is a quintic. So eventually, this is going to turn into a quintic equation, which I'm about to give you. Ready? Okay. We get x to the fifth power minus 411 x to the fourth power minus 2588 x to the third minus 7513 x squared plus 13,000. 33x minus 18,494, which is our constant, and we're almost done. And that is equal to zero. Don't you love this? Beautiful, right? It's a beautiful quintic. Unfortunately, there is no quintic formula. Even if there was a quintic formula, you probably wouldn't use it to solve something like this, right? That would be crazy. But anyways, you're probably thinking, there needs to be a better way to do the problem. By the way, uh, how did I get this result? Did I do all the work? No, I'm lazy. I wouldn't because I let Wolfram Alpha do the work and hopefully it didn't make any mistakes, right? I mean, this part I've done, but the rest is Wolfram Alpha. Anyways, that's a lot of work and I wouldn't do it. I just let it do it. So hopefully that is good for you. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a better method, right? Usually in my videos, you probably noticed second method is a better way to do it. But why do I start with the first? Because no pain, no gain, right? First, I got to torture it a little bit, and then you can go ahead and enjoy the really cool way to do it. What is the really cool way to do it? Obviously, you can always guess and check, and I'm pretty sure quite a few people did find the solution by guessing, but here's the million dollar question. Is that the only solution, and how can you find all the solutions, right? So, here's what we're going to do. When you get a radical equation, first of all, think about it. This problem could have appeared on a math contest. I'm not saying it did. It might have. I don't know because I just got it from a book. I can't rem remember which one. But these problems are very common on math competitions and math olympiads. So what's the idea? The idea is not to go brute force, not, not to do it for very long, 
but something smart, something slick, something wise to do. So we're gonna go ahead and use or take advantage of substitution. So I'm gonna call this expression A along with the radical, and I'm gonna call this B. That's called substitution. Well, why am I using two variables? Because that makes it, things a lot easier. So this gives us A plus B equals three, which is so far so good, right? Now notice what you did. The fifth root of x minus one was named A, and the square root of x plus two was named B. And this implies, the first one implies x minus one is A to the fifth power, if you fifth power both sides. And then second one means x plus two is equal to B squared. So far so good, right? Here's what we're gonna do to put this together. From both of these equations, and you can do it definitely in a different way, like you can subtract, so on and so forth, but I'm gonna isolate x from both of these equations, so that gives me a to the fifth, or maybe I should start with b, that seems better. Uh, x equals, from the second equation, b squared minus two, but from this equation, it is equal to a to the fifth plus one. So these two things are equal, that's really, cool, by the way, right? And then from that, we get the following. I can go ahead and isolate b squared. That becomes a to the fifth plus three. Along with a plus b equals three, we get a nice system, a super duper nice system, because very easy to solve. It still becomes a quintic, that's okay, quintic, but it's a lot easier because what you can do is, we could probably start with this, a to the fifth plus three equals b squared, and now, this is equal to b squared, I'm going to go ahead and replace b from the second equation with three minus a, so that's something I'm going to substitute here. So a to the fifth plus three equals three minus a quantity squared, and again, this is a quintic, but a lot simpler. Look, look at this equation, and look at that equation. I mean, huge difference, right? Day and night. So now we're gonna go ahead and expand a to the fifth plus three, nine plus a squared minus six a. Let's put everything together, a to the fifth minus a squared plus six a, three minus nine, it's a negative six equals zero. And this is the best part. We can guess and check. Obviously, a equals one is a solution, but guess what? This is factorable, wow. Such a huge difference, right? So we can go ahead and factor by grouping because a equals one is a solution, we can factor out a squared and get a cubed minus one plus six times a minus one. And now a cubed minus one is difference of two cubes that can be factored like this, right? You probably know that. If not, please memorize. It's super duper important. And then we can go ahead and factor out a minus one, which is a common factor. Of course, that verifies that a equals one is a solution. We already knew that. But if you go ahead and distribute a to the fourth plus a cubed, plus a squared plus six equals zero. Nice. Now, we know that a equals one is a solution, but we also know that from here, we don't get a positive solution because if a is greater than zero, everything adds up to a positive number, which can never be zero. So can there be a negative solution? That's a good question. Now, if you go ahead and test it out, any method you want, you can use the quartic formula, you can depress it, use Ferrari, whatever, you know, whoever's method, Lamborghini, I don't know. But you're gonna find that eventually, I use law from alpha, by the way, there are no real roots, haha. <laughs> nice surprise, right? But a equals one is a good solution, and a equals one gives us the fifth root of x minus one equals one, because that's a, and from here we get x equals two. If you test it out, you're gonna realize, yes, that indeed worked, because the fifth root of two minus one plus the square root of two plus two is equal to one plus two, which is three. Yay, we got a solution, Houston. That's awesome. Now let's go ahead and check if Wolfram Alpha can solve a problem like this, or maybe even graph it. I don't know if I included a solution. I probably didn't. But as you can see here, this graph is always increasing, and there's only one solution at x equals two. That's the only real solution. Complex solutions, of course, do not show on the graph. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.